them on at five seconds. Good evening and welcome to the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. And a special welcome to you, Dr. Woodruff, who will be giving us a presentation later in the evening. Uh, tonight we have two members who will be joining our committee. Uh, one, one is Grace Hallbrook, who is not able to join us because she's uh, in Japan for three weeks. And the second member who is here, Sarah Holden, uh, she was appointed at the September 3rd meeting of the Jacksonville City Council for a two-year term as a leadership development member. And if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to the committee, that would be wonderful. It's great to be here. My name is Sarah from Jacksonville. I'm just happy to be a part of bringing our community brightening it up and looking forward to hearing what you guys are up to. Well, we're glad to have you and at this time uh, Councilwoman Washington is going to pin you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you send it? <laughs> <laughs> However, whatever you would like to do. <laughs> Um, Mrs. Holden, on behalf of the City of Jacksonville, I, Councilwoman Angela Washington, welcome you to our group, and we look forward to welcoming you. Look forward to working with you on all of our endeavors. Thank you for being Thank part you. of our group. Thank you. All right. Um, on page five is the committee member information. If your contact information needs to be um, updated, corrected, anything like that, um, please let one of the city staff members know and we'll get that taken care of. All right. Uh, at this time, we have an adoption of the agenda. The agenda was emailed out earlier in the week. It has been revised just a tad bit. Um, if you'd like to take a minute to or second or two to look over that that would be great if you hadn't already done so do we have a motion for adoption um, I'll make a motion that we adopt the agenda thank you second Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. The agenda will stand as written. Thank you, Sunshine and Karen. Uh, we also have, which was emailed out earlier this week too, is the minutes from our August 5th meeting. And do at this time, do we have a motion to adopt, correct, or reject the minutes from our August 5th meeting? A motion to adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Patrick and Ossie. All right, Dr. Ritter. First of all, it's always a pleasure to be with you. And Sarah, on behalf of the mayor and council also, as Ms. Washington said, thank you for uh, joining this group. You'll find that this is a group that has a long history of caring about the community, and they have put their caring in the form of real projects. This is not a committee that just meets and enjoys socializing. It's a committee that believes in working. I can take you around to many places in the city and show to you the accomplishments that they have brought to this community over the last 20, 30 years. So you're joining a very good group. What we'd like to do tonight is give the committee an update on many things that we're working on for landscaping and streetscaping. Uh, I think it's an exciting time to be part of this community for many reasons. The mayor and council are committed to these projects. We've been very blessed to have funding from the council and from some other sources. So let's begin with kind of an overview. As you know, uh, 30 years ago in October, there was a tragic event that occurred in Beirut. It was really the beginning of the war on terrorism. We didn't realize it at that time, but it truly was. We are celebrating in, on October 23rd the 30th anniversary of that uh, horrific event. At that time, the community came together as many of you were here and lived it. And one of the things that we did, or you did, was to plant trees to honor these folks. They were Bradford pears. They've been beautiful over the years. And as you know, uh, the Bradford pear tree, uh, while it is absolutely beautiful, as it matures, it has some challenges like many 
uh, probably even us, we have challenges as we grow. And part of those challenges have been weather and disease and bad drivers. And so a thought came up, which we discussed with you before, about the possibility of creating a Beirut Memorial Grove. Part of this was because the trees along 24, many of them are being impacted by the road improvements in the process of creating a new gate. There are over 30 trees that will come out there. The other was a recognition that by forming a grove, you actually have, if I may use the term, almost a, a monument setting that people will recognize rather than trees in a linear fashion that people may only see as landscaping while others of us know that it's really a memorial. So we originally brought to you a proposal to build it in a location on 24. And as you know, everybody, y'all, the mayor and council, everybody thought that was a great idea. The unfortunate thing was that as we moved that concept down the road, uh, we found that the DOT in their environmental assessment uh, had designated this property as open space and as we researched it further it turned out there was simply too much man-made wetland. When the highway was originally built it wasn't wetland but because of the way the highway was built that particular piece of property has held water long enough that it now meets unfortunately the designation or the criteria for wetlands. So we had to take that location off the table. Y'all looked at other locations, the mayor and council looked at other locations, and just recently the mayor and council did bless this site, which is on the bypass. It is a triangular piece of property, as you will see in, in just a moment a little bit better. But the concept is to create a true memorial grove and we will be using this piece of property which you can see on the aerial uh, it is across the street from camp geiger some of you will remember the role that camp geiger played relative to the training of the personnel who were killed that day in beirut they all or almost all of them came from camp geiger so while the first site would have been ideal because of the rails to trails programs and some other things, as it turns out, the relationship of the Marine to the training grounds and this site to the training grounds is also a very appropriate location. We are very pleased, let me go back one. We're very pleased to tell you that as part of the Beirut ceremony, we are going to have some of the uh, autumn flowering cherry. Ms. Williams, what's the correct name of that tree? Autumn flowering cherry. Okay, the autumn uh, cherry. Uh, we will actually have some samples that will be at that ceremony. Now, the ceremony, of course, will occur at the Beirut Memorial. But we are planning part of that ceremony to be a dedication of the future grove. And we will have trees there and we'll actually have a ribbon cutting. And, of course, uh, in hopefully within a year, this site will actually be planted and you will have the full contingent of trees in one location. We've also worked with Robert Voss and the DOT and they have agreed that they will place signage out on the bypass so that as citizens travel by this site, they will actually know what they're looking at. And so I think that's, that's something uh, that has turned out to be uh, a positive step and of course, these trees, uh, over time, they will start rather small, but the DOT, who is funding this, I should also mention that to you, they have agreed to fund this. Uh, the DOT has agreed that they will not buy anything smaller than two inch caliber. So these won't be little twigs, but they also won't be you know, 15 foot tall trees. They will at least come out of the ground with reasonable size. Once installed, the city parks department will be responsible for the long-term maintenance. So. I think very exciting and, and very positive. So this project will officially begin on the 30th anniversary of the Beirut bombing, October 23rd. Don Woodruff, yes, on the sketch here, when you first put those trees up and that's in bloom, that's at eye level or a car level. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, then 
the last location be where we can see it from the car? It's not going to be where we're going to be way up and then look down? No, actually, right here. Uh, what you will actually see, and let me use this, as you are on <laughs> this side, then do you have a where I, oops. Yeah. Let's try that now. Right, let me go back one. Thank you. When you're on this side mm -hmm. of the garden. Didn't want to do it there. We'll try okay. this one more time here. If I just had my Crayolas, I would be okay. <laughs> <old. laughs> Let me just go back and, and do this. On the right side or, or upper side of the triangle, in that area where the era is, that the ground is pretty much at ground level. So you will be, as you are coming you know, in that direction, one of the challenges that we're going to have is the vegetation between the uh, outbound and inbound lanes we will be doing some clearing in there too so that the site visibility will be good when you're on the bottom arc you will be able to see from a very nice perspective a car perspective and you will have a chance you will be looking yeah. down in that location mm -hmm. and then as you are on the left side of the triangle and you're coming through you will actually be looking up because of the various elevation changes of the road and the elevation changes of the property. So there will be uh, various mm -hmm. viewpoints of it. One of the nicest views is going to be as you come out of town and you're on the bridge. Because of the bridge height, you will be looking ahead and down just a little bit at the grove. So you're, you're going to see, in some cases, just some of the trees. In other cases, you're going to almost have a bird's eye view where you can look down on it's the right. whole grove. So it's it will, really good. It will right. be beautiful once they start to mature. Another thing that uh, the city and the county began a planning mission uh, many years ago. I believe it was in the, uh, in the 90s. They hired consultants to talk about Newbridge Street. And the planning effort for various reasons really has not moved forward. We have a new committee that the county commission appointed two persons to and the city council appointed two persons to. Jerome Willingham, Michael Lazaro represent the city, uh, Mrs. Eichner and Chairman Buchanan represent the county. And we are looking at the overall downtown. But part of what the council has been focusing on are the four blocks right here between the Freedom Fountain and the middle school. As you will recall, those four blocks are all four-laned. They have angle parking. At the end, in front of the middle school, you get down to two lanes with parallel parking. So what the council has asked us to do is to come up with some ideas about how we can do a streetscape project in this area. Now the example you're going to see just shows this one block, but the intent is to do all four blocks. I will tell you because of funding, we will have to do them in phasing. I will also say to you that the council has not picked a pattern <laughs> and we have not gone far enough as far as real design work. But let me talk to you about the concepts. And remember, this wouldn't just be in front of City Hall. The other thing to remember as you look at the concepts, you don't have to pick one pattern to fit all four blocks. You may decide that one plan would work in front of City Hall, while another plan would work better in front of businesses. So let's talk about what the plans are. In front of City Hall, you have angle parking, two lanes of traffic going towards the downtown, two lanes of traffic coming out of downtown, and angle parking. One of the concepts would be to keep the angle parking and to take a portion of the middle of the road and landscape it very nicely with medians and then have one lane of traffic going down and one lane of traffic coming back. Many of you remember the time before the bypass was installed that you needed all the lanes that are out there plus. Well, I can tell you that we don't have that kind of traffic downtown today. So doing something to beautify the streetscape would be a good thing. What I'd also ask you to look at is on the far left-hand side of the picture, you will notice as the West Bayshore Boulevard area, this area right here, 
We're also talking about some pedestrian improvements. Why is that? Today, from the face of the curb to the face of the curb, you have almost 100 feet of asphalt. And if you're a pedestrian crossing anywhere in front of City Hall, uh, you really have no safety zone created other than the cars that might be parked in an angle. So part of the concept would be to formalize and to harden the pedestrian movements. The common name, it's not a technical scientific name, but the common name is bulb outs, almost like a bulb coming out of the ground. And what you can see in front of City Hall, in front of the bank, and back down at the far corner, would be examples of how you would put curbing all the way out to the back of the parking space, and then you would landscape in there, and you would have a formal, we call it paint, but it's actually plastic, stripes across the street, or you could put in brick pavers across the street. There are many patterns that you could do. But the concept would be that you would beautify the street and you would harden and protect the pedestrian crossing patterns. This is one scheme which uses, of course, the center medium. Another scheme is to take your two travel lanes and leave them in the middle of the street. And in this scheme, what you would do is you would widen the current sidewalks where you would take the curb line and literally move it further out so the space between the building and the vehicle would go from roughly 8 to 10 feet up to as many as 20 feet. Now, this is a technique that I don't know we would need in front of City Hall, but think down the block. In the future, we hope that we're going to have some nice cafes, some diners, some restaurants. People may want to eat out on the sidewalk. So by moving the curbing further out, you could actually create a venue for outside dining. I will say to you, many communities uh, that, that I have visited have this. It seems to be a very positive thing. Uh, so that is uh, the other option. One of the real challenges of this option, though, is drainage. The curb line, obviously, is where the drainage system is. If you're going to move the sidewalk out, you have to move the drainage system or address the drainage system. And that will cause the cost of this option to be substantially larger than the cost, if I may go back one, of this option. You will see in this option, your expense is in the pedestrian safety devices and in the center median. Well, that's expensive, but I will tell you it's not nearly as expensive as moving the drainage system. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't spend that money. What I'm saying is there are <coughs> pros and cons of, of each. Now, as a variation, we also looked at two other things. This is the center median, but it has parallel parking. And then this is the center roadway with parallel parking. Most of the feedback when the Planning Commission and Planning Department or Planning Advisory Board and the Planning Department met to discuss these options, most people were not in favor of parallel parking. Uh, even the people who have these new cars that you apparently can push a button and it parks itself, you know, I'm not so sure I want to parallel park in my Ford F-150. It's been a long time since I've done that. But the important thing is that the mayor and council are looking at these opportunities. Now, where do you fit into that? Part of it is these are all conceptual. We will need to be talking very seriously about what trees and what vegetation do we want on the streets. And of course, one of the things that we need to remember is that unfortunately, a lot of what I call Main Street, New Bridge Street, has overhead power lines and to underground those power lines is extremely expensive, so we're going to have to take all those things into consideration. Let's talk about short term. That was the long term. To do the, to do the long term, all four blocks, 
we don't have a real opinion of probable cause, but we do have what we would call some educated swags. The educated swag says you're probably talking between six and eight hundred thousand dollars, and that's if you're not moving the curb line. It's it's expensive. It doesn't mean we shouldn't be heading in this direction. On the short term, we have to ask ourselves, are we satisfied with what's out here today? And I think most of you would agree it's not a good representation of what this city stands for, what you as a committee stands for, and certainly not what the mayor and council want. So short term, here are some thoughts. You can see in these graphics some of the trees. And I had to laugh because when Glenn asked the staff to go out and take pictures, they took the pictures of the best trees. What I wanted them to take was pictures of the worst trees. Because <laughs> this isn't, while in front of City Hall you have some absolutely beautiful trees and they're all doing well, most of the other trees along Newbridge Street aren't nearly as nice as these. Some of them actually look as if they are bonsai plants. So one of the concepts that Michael LaQuarrie and Kate, uh, Kate recently was married, so she's now Kate Perkins. <coughs> You've met Kate as our horticulturalist. Some of the concepts that we have are to do something like this. This is just up the street in our sister city, Moorhead City. Uh, they simply, instead of having the trees like we have in little four by four boxes where we cut them out of the sidewalk, what they have done is to make bigger boxes. They simply cut the sidewalk where these are basically 12 feet long and five feet wide, and they have put in what I would call temporary landscaping. This we can do relatively inexpensively, <coughs> and we can actually begin to do something like this now, whereas the other is a much longer capital improvement. What Kate has done is to draw up some samples. You all know these plants a lot better than I do, but the basic plant would be, or the basic tree would be a crepe myrtle so that we don't have to worry about it getting too far up into the power lines. And you can see through these, and again, you will recognize these plants while I may not, but the concept would be low maintenance, something that has beauty year round. I understand the Nandinas which I'm not so sure I could pick one out in a crowd. But I understand the Nandina is red and green almost all year long, while some other uh, plants are only uh, basically warm weather plants. But whether it's option A, B, or C, the concept would be to begin in the very near future, possibly as soon as October or November, to actually begin to dig out more concrete come up with a short-term plan. And whether that short-term plan would be there five years or longer, who knows, but at least we would have been doing something positive in the near future rather than waiting for the, for the long future. Now, anytime during this, I would welcome you all to stop and, and give input. So let me ask you this. What do you think about, not necessarily specific plans, but the concept of having a short-term plan for improving New Ridge Street while we're waiting for the funding of the long-term plan. What are your thoughts? If I may, I think long short-term is going to get the businesses to come in because that's, I mean, it's beautiful in Moorhead City. And there's a lot of those cute little boutiques and shops and restaurants and that kind of thing. And I think if we get the businesses to come in, that's going to help us fund for long-term. I mean, it's the long-term project it would be beautiful, no doubt, but I mean, I think that we need to go short-term to get the businesses to actually come in more than they are now. I mean, okay. I mean, I would love to come downtown and eat outside. And What's going to happen to the short-term items once you decide to go to the long-term project? Well, <clears throat> part of the answer there is it depends on how long we wait for the long-term. Mm -hmm. Most of the plants that we put in are transplantable. Now, once the, uh, once the crepe myrtle, if that's the tree that we went with, gets too large, it becomes very difficult to mm -hmm. transplant. Right. We do know that Nandinas and most of the other bushes, we can do a pretty good job mm -hmm. of transplanting them. But you know horticulture better than I do. Uh, if at the end, 
and I don't mean this in a negative way, if in the, if, if in the end we simply had to cut them down as part of the bigger project, we will have at least had a period of positive environmental and beauty while they, while they may have given their life in the service of that, you know, it, it wouldn't have, uh, if I may use the term, it wouldn't have gone unnoticed. And does the Moorhead have overhead um, electrical system or is it underground? It's, it's actually a combination. Mm -hmm. In this particular area, it is underground or what I'll call back alley. Back alley. Yeah. Yes, <coughs> Yes, ma'am. I think that um, you know, you notice how many people like walking in the um, park area because it's so nicely landscaped and it's pretty. So that if we did landscape along the sidewalks and make it nice, you'll have more people walking along that area because people like to walk where things are nice. Um, that's why I like the idea of the trees being along the sidewalks. Um, I always find that if, a, if an area is aesthetically nice, it makes for a nice walk, as long as the sidewalks are nice and even and not broken up. You know, Karen, you, uh, you bring up a very good point. The studies, the planning studies, <clears throat> which as you know, we were in an engineering and planning firm for a long time. The planning studies are very clear. It is not what you're walking on. Now, it would be nice to have nice wide brick sidewalks or brand new concrete sidewalks. The study shows that that, that is not what really attracts people. What attracts people is the landscaping, the feeling of security, the amenity package you put in with benches and with lighting and with trash cans. but as long as the sidewalk is not broken up where right. people have to worry about falling, it really isn't an issue of whether that sidewalk has been there 50 years or whether it's brand new brick. But you, you hit the nail on the head, I think. It is, the, it is the feel, it is the amenity that is created by those things you put in. And then I think the more people that start walking, the people who want to put in stores are going to notice that because then people are going to start looking at the stores. Is short term all the way down or just in front of the city hall? Well, no, uh, actually for this project we can probably go uh, almost the whole length. And why is that? Well, number one, there's no engineering. Number two, there really is design work, but Kate's already done that mm -hmm. and you all can assist in finalizing that. Number three, Cutting out concrete is done by city crews. Mm -hmm. Number four, digging out the dirt is done by city crews. Number five, planting the plants are done by y'all. That was supposed to be funny. <laughs> 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 no, it, it, other than buying the, the plants, and when Kate and Michael and I talked about this, we believe we can get very mature stock, and each of these would only cost about $500. I mean, that's... Per per space okay and we're not five hundred dollars is not talking about the city of labor mm -hmm. but we're talking about we're, we're not talking about buying little crepe myrtles right. of a one inch caliber we're talking about something that has some immediate pizzazz mm -hmm. okay. and plants that don't come into one gallon size but get at least three gallon size mm -hmm. and then properly mulch it or properly put in brick chips whatever we decide that we would do in that area but for roughly five hundred dollars a space now Moorhead City, as you see, they have these, pick a number, once every 25, 30 feet. We don't necessarily have to have them that close. You wouldn't want them too far spaced apart because then it doesn't look like you really did no. much. But, you know, uh, easily with the money that the city already has allocated, we could do this and we could accomplish a major change in the downtown area very quickly mm -hmm. from a landscape standpoint. If we do this in the short term, and then you go and you look at that long-term one and you stick it in the middle. You're going to destroy the aesthetics that we created in the short term. Truthfully, I don't like the long-term one with it in the middle. You mean uh, the one with the median in the middle? With the median in the middle. Um, because we talk about cars hitting trees as we have now, even though they go slower but we're then taking the trees away from
from the people who walk. Because who's going to walk in the middle where the trees are? Oh, well, hopefully nobody on that one. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> nobody. So the people who are used to walking the sidewalks and enjoying the trees, then suddenly you're going to say, okay, no more trees. What we and that found. takes them from walking away where all that traffic was for the stores. I will tell you that uh, in looking at it from a planning perspective, this particular pattern, forget that it's parallel parking, I'm not suggesting parallel parking, this pattern would work well in front of City Hall. I don't believe it works well in front of any of the other three blocks. And one of the reasons why is because it doesn't address, it, it, it beautifies the street, but it doesn't address how you help the store merchant. This plan, if I may go back, this plan actually helps the store merchant right. because it moves the cars to the middle. It would even allow, although it would be illegal, I have seen it happen, it would allow a person to come down the street and suddenly take a hard left and go into a parking space, but again, that's illegal. But this would be the plan that I would definitely recommend to council for the next three blocks down, and maybe even this block. Why? Because of its benefit to the merchant. Mm -hmm. But I will say to you again, this is the expensive option because of moving right. the drainage. But I will say also this, if you're going to do it, you should do it right, right. rather than spend your money and regret it. Now, the six hundred to eight hundred thousand is that would be for all the blocks, or is that yes, just one? No, that so, would what would it cost if you did the center one down here by City Hall, and then you just did the along the sidewalk, the planning like Moorhead has? Uh, do you, do you know, you know I, I would say, I would say to do this in front of City Hall, you're probably talking. Uh, not this, but, but to do yeah, the other e in either of mm -hmm. these, you're probably talking for this plan two hundred thousand dollars. The other thing, though, uh, that you asked about was uh, a combination of this and the other. Uh, we haven't the other meaning the short term. The, plan. the short term yeah. further for the other businesses. Yeah, we haven't uh, priced that, but I would just knowing how long it is, and knowing we could do those for five hundred dollars a piece. I don't think you're talking, you know, more than forty, fifty thousand dollars for the whole thing. Uh, but so we wouldn't. We could give you a better number. Financially, is it feasible to do this one and the short term at the same time, or no? Not, not with the money right now. The city council two years ago set aside a hundred and twenty-seven thousand oh. dollars, and that's all they've been able because of other issues, right. many of which you are quite aware of. Uh, we have not been able to add to that fund. But on the other hand, you could move forward with council's blessings on a plan like this mm -hmm. literally this year. Uh, positives, pros and cons on, on doing both. So something for you to think about. Any other questions about this before we move to the next topic? It's better than what you got now. Okay. <laughs> now, we have a lot of things that I think are exciting that you're going to like. Uh, let's talk about some streetscapes that the DOT is partnering. These are real projects that are getting ready to happen. Getting ready to happen means these will be bid in October next month. These will be installed and completed by March of 14. So these are exciting things. Now, you can see the... Um, the downtown area uh, to uh, there is the intersection of Johnson and 17. Uh, Karen and Glenn's church is up there in the upper left hand corner. That's the Methodist church. The Catholic church is back down here on the left. Uh, that's a very important intersection. What we know is that years ago through your assistance the beautiful median there was created. What we also know is actually out in the travel lane, this is what was created. So when you're on 17, what you've got, if you pardon the expression, is a worn out asphalt, not even concrete, a worn out asphalt median. Now about a year ago when we were tearing down the Bojangles building to start the Center for Public Safety, they had a whole bunch of Nandinas and other plants that when we bought that building, we bought them all. And rather than just, you know, nuke them or tear them out, we said, where can we plant them? On a short-term basis, we came out to one of these medians. Now, you're at a median where you are headed towards the new bridge, 
The beautiful landscaping is on your left, so Johnson Boulevard is on your left. What we did is we dug out the top four inches of asphalt and we at least put in brick chips and we planted those Nandinas. It was better than what was there, but it hasn't really, it was a step in the right direction, but it wasn't the long-term solution. So we've talked to the DOT about taking this median on one side of that intersection and this median on the other side and coming up with a beautiful landscape theme and some stamped concrete so that on both sides of this major intersection you're now going to have landscaping. It will be irrigated so that we won't have the issues that we have with some with uh, most of our irrigation, I'm sorry, most of our landscaping we put in and then if you pardon the expression we pray for rain. Mm -hmm. We can't do that anymore. We have got to assume that if we're going to put the investment in for proper landscaping, we have to water it. So as we move forward with all of these projects, we're going to look at can we put in irrigation. I can tell you that on Newbridge Street, no we can't. But there are some techniques we can use for watering that will help these plants in, in dry weather. This, of course, is Johnson Boulevard at the intersection. So literally next month, these two will be awarded a bid by the DOT, and by March, April at the latest, these two will be completely landscaped. Absolutely beautiful. The crepe myrtles and so forth, you can, you can read the, the uh, uh, types of vegetation, but I don't guess you can read. I'm not sure what a 7RP is or a 230H. I can just tell you that Kate has been working with the state DOT landscaper because you can't put anything in their right-of-way that doesn't meet their standards. These will be beautiful. They will be low maintenance, so we don't have to be out there every week with hedge trimmers and so forth. But great news. I think you're excited about that. This is more of a cross-section, and one of the reasons why we wanted to point out the cross-section is you all have suggested in the past using a combination of landscape materials. You will notice on the outside, roughly the 12 inch area, that will be stones. And that way it will hold down some uh, erosion problems of the mulch washing into the street. It also will act as an anchor and it's a low, low maintenance technique. But I think you'll be very pleased with uh, what, you're, what you're going to see there. Any questions about that project? Okay, let's move to the next one. You know that at the far point where Cheney and 17 come together, that uh, two years ago or so, we had another one of those asphalt strips. And so, so for the short term, what we did was to dig it out, put in uh, great brick chips, and put in plants. And while we've had one or two people make a hard turn and break those pots, amazingly enough, it's been there almost three years, we've only had two pots get broken, and it has beautified this area. The other thing I'd ask you to look at is the bull nose across the street there. That is a piece that just had volunteer vegetation. Uh, Kate and, and Michael and their folks cut out all of the stuff that really wasn't good. We have at least a nice greenery and open vision there, and we have a couple of crepe myrtles, and we're going to be looking at how we can landscape that part too. So, you know, these are things that are that are uh, accomplishments, but we're going to continue to try to improve those. Let's go uh, now to another location, and that's the Richland Highway. On your right, you've crossed the Phillips Bridge. You're now heading out of town. The Dairy Queen is at the very far left end. I know none of you visit there, so you don't know where it is. The road to the right takes you out to the uh, uh, Freedom Village. The road to the left takes you down to the uh, Wilmington area. We have some nice landscaping in there. We're working with the DOT to try to improve that landscaping. But what we also want to show you in that landscaped area, uh, we do not have this approved yet for DOT funding. It is one of our wish list projects. Hopefully this time next year, the DOT will have approved this as a landscape project. The ones you saw before have been approved, money allocated, bids going out. 
this is a project that is a hope to be. And we will take the landscaping that's already very, very beautiful in the far part and uh, continue it and, and improve it. You can see some of the concepts that we're looking at with uh, a lot more plantings. While we have some good plantings on the inside and, and outside of that median, we think we can do a better job and do you know some better landscaping. And this is. I'm sorry. Who's responsible for keeping all this up? The city. Once we put them in and get the grants, it becomes us and you know obviously the city oh, taxpayer. Michael. Pardon me. <laughs> yeah. This is all falling back on Michael. Yeah, but, you know, he's only working like 12 hours a day. I know, so. I'm sure. <laughs> but that's the importance, uh, you know, you, uh, Suzanne, you bring up a very good point. That's the importance of selecting the right plants. Right. So. These can be very low maintenance. I can tell you the highest maintenance you can put in is what? Anybody want to guess? Roses. Grass. Grass. Because it has to be Grass. Cut. you got to cut it every day. While we're doing a great job of mowing all of Western Boulevard, yes, which looks mm -hmm. fabulous. it looks fabulous. What we need to do as a community is over the next 10 years convert all of that into properly landscaped medians. While the investment is greater, the daily operating cost mm -hmm. is significantly less. So again, what we're talking about here are things that will be plants that are very, very low maintenance. You shouldn't have to go out to these medians and do anything other than pick the weeds or to pick the uh, trash out of them once every you know, short term and then maybe three times a year go fertilize and do some minor maintenance. That's, that's our goal. Now Here. will this also have water? Yes, ma'am. Irrigation. So that's the format okay. now. Is irrigation first and then planting? That's correct. On everything. Now, when I say on everything, once again, like on Newbridge Street, we don't have that option. Right, but where we're doing this type of stuff, water systems have to be put in. Otherwise, they're just going to look like, you know, yeah. look like they would look. Here is an exciting additional. This is the fork in the road where on the left-hand side you're going to the Phillips Bridge on 17. On the right-hand side you're going to the Popkin Bridge on Old, Old Bridge Street. We already have some great landscaping in there, but guess what? No water system. So what we're talking about doing is taking this area, which Kate, I saw her down on her hands and knees today, actually in that landscaped area, pulling out uh, dead plants and putting in new plants. But we're talking about changing this to a new system. And I want you to notice, what's the price of gas up there, Ms. Williams? <laughs> 339. 339. Now, here is what we'd like to do in that area. And while you may not be able to make it out, the price of gas is 385, 386. One of the ironies of this picture is yes, things are expensive. And if you're going to move from what is an okay, it's okay, nothing overly wrong with it but to a new design really welcoming you to the new downtown area, we will have to have funding for these. Now, council certainly hasn't approved these. These are dreams that we are rolling out to you and to the council. But you can see with proper design, proper landscaping, proper maintenance, including irrigation, we can really do some good things. One of the positive things that has come up though with the DOT grant and this one again is funded, will begin under the bid process in, Mar in uh, October, completed by March. If you have come through the intersection of Old Bridge and you're turning on to 17 at that red light, you know that what you have out there today is, if I can get a picture of it, did we get a picture of it, Glenn? No, we didn't. We'll go back a second. What you have is a concrete median and that concrete median was installed in the 1300s <laughs> it was worn out in the 1500s should have been dug up in the 1700s but still exists so that long almost 300 foot long median will be completely dug up and will be landscaped and hardscaped and beautified so that now, by the spring of 14, we're not talking about dreams, we're talking about reality. By the spring of 14, you will come 
through 17, you'll come past this new beautiful median, you'll cross the brand new beautiful bridge, you will go down to the new Center for Public Safety, you will go to Johnson Boulevard where you'll have new beautiful landscaping. That whole zone in there will be transformed within the next nine months. To me, uh, that's it's unbelievable exciting. and exciting. It moves what you folks have been working on for years, it moves it into real projects that are being funded. And I can't tell you again, we really owe Robert Voss and the DOT uh, a, a real thank you because these projects are not little $5,000 projects. Yeah. I mean, you're talking here, uh, you know, uh, substantial seventy to one hundred thousand dollars worth of work, and it's coming from the DOT landscape funds. Now, while we're talking about the DOT, the the building that you see just above the DEP and the word department, that is the DOT maintenance building. The building that you see below the word compound, that's where you go to get your driver's license. And I know all of you enjoy that experience, <laughs> but what we know also is that intersection that is in that area is currently not functioning. Why? Because it's a signalized intersection. It has a very short distance between the inbound 17 and outbound 17 lanes. The DOT has approved a project where they are going to be redesigning that intersection. What that's going to mean, though, is that a lot of the vegetation, let me go back, a lot of the beautiful trees that are in that area are going to be taken out. And that's because in order to create the stacking and turn lanes, which the DOT is now going to be installing, and the reason why we're bringing this up is because we don't want y'all to be caught off guard by suddenly calling Glenn or the staff and saying, what in the world's going on? Why are they taking out all the trees? The DOT has committed that they will work with us on future landscape grants to properly landscape once this is finished. Now, this is not a project that's going to be starting in the next several months. It is probably in the spring, but I'm just giving you a heads up. This intersection is going to be substantially reworked, and there will be a negative impact on the trees. We are working with the DOT to try to transplant the crepe myrtles. The hardwoods that are there are simply too large. You cannot, you cannot transplant those and expect them to live. So good news and, and some bad news there. This is not for the uh, Blue Storm Memorial marker, is it? Actually, yes, ma'am, it is. Because um, we, we were will. thinking about trying to redo that. So do you, this is where that marker is. Yes, ma'am. Actually, that marker is right next to the word e, or the ESS in business. Okay, I right see. Right there. It. I see. And what we're going to do is we've already begun a process with the DOT to try to figure out where will we relocate that. It may be further down in some of our other medians. It may be on the side of the road, but we've got to work with the DOT and with y'all to determine a proper location. Yeah, the, the um, North Carolina Garden Club Association will have to get involved with that, but I don't think it will make any difference where it's moved to as long as it's maintained. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma because it looks bad now. Now, real quickly, I apologize for just taking uh, as long as it is, so let me just uh, move on. Um, now, Glenn, oh, this is uh, that same intersection, and let me do it this way. If you're coming from in town and you're headed out of town, what you're going to see is this configuration now, where instead of having the turn lane immediately adjacent to the travel lane, you're going to have the turn lane offset, so you'll have a landscaped area between that turn lane and the travel lane, and then you will see the new landscape palette that would come in there. So while it's going to be, if you pardon the expression, negative, there will be a positive outcome. Let's move real quickly to opportunities. Johnson Boulevard. Many of you have, have seen the changes on Johnson Boulevard. We're talking right here beside City Hall all the way down to Cheney. And what you know in that area is that at one time it carried a huge volume of traffic. And at one time, you needed six lanes, and you probably needed eight or ten lanes. Well, with the bypass, we no longer need all those lanes of travel. 
So what we have done in the what they call a street diet, I've never actually heard that term in my life, but what they've done is to skinny the program and to revise it. In the top, what you see is <coughs> cars and curbs. In the bottom, what you see is a proper bicycle lane, cars, and an area that's open for turning. Now, why is that important? Because in the future, we can take those turning areas, which are currently asphalt, and we can dig them up, and we can put planters in there, so you will actually wind up with a beautiful four-lane street there are very few businesses on there, definitely not very many retail businesses. As you know, on the far side of the road, it's still all residential. So by putting a center median in there for the residences, instead of having you know 66 feet of asphalt, you're now gonna have 24 feet of asphalt. For the residents, it's going to make that a much friendlier street. For the traveling public, it's going to make it a much friendlier street because you now have bicycle paths that will connect the bicycle path, rails to trails, all the way down at Cheney. You'll be able to use this road to come all the way up here to the Freedom Fountain and over to Memorial Gardens where the bicycle trail picks back up. So this will be the connection. But we wanted to show you that this is not something that will be funded in the next five years, but it is a potential and we purposely laid it out. This is what's there today. And you will see that there are some turning areas, yep. But you'll also see beyond those turning areas, envision some landscaping that would go in there. Johnson Boulevard improvements. Uh, the other thing we wanted to talk about was, as you come past the Freedom Fountain, the area that's directly in front of Brood Awakening, there is a long concrete median there. It's been there maybe not as long as some of the other medians, but there a long time. The DOT, when they resurfaced the road, did not touch that median, and the reason why is that is part of the Freedom Fountain plan. What we hope to do in this area is to convert that broken up concrete median to this, where what we will have are the five flags of the military and beautiful landscaping and hardscaping. You would notice that they show flagpoles and so forth in various locations. That is a project that we hope to actually have under construction within a year. The DOT took the money that they would have spent on digging up that median and repouring it, and they've set it aside and said, Instead of spending money way A, if the city wants us to spend it way B, then that's what they will do. So this is a, a real improvement as we come to the downtown. There's another Blue Star Memorial at, right there at Johnson. So that's not going to be interrupted tomorrow. No, ma'am. Okay. No. okay. Uh, now, let me, I, I recognize it's already, you've been very kind with my time. Uh, Jacksonville Landing, let me just walk you through this real quickly. This is the area between the two bridges. It is a plan that has been funded. Mayor and council spent over a million and a half dollars buying and tearing down all those buildings. You can see just by having the vacant land there today, the improvement the mayor and council have accomplished for the community. Working in concert with the county who does own the waterfront, the county has agreed to put their waterfront property in this. We are fortunate that we have a grant to fully build this facility by the State Commission on Wildlife. Mm -hmm. And what you're gonna have is three boat ramps, about 70 trailer parking spaces, about 40 vehicle parking spaces. At the top, you will notice a little building that's green. That's not part of this plan, but it's a space for a future welcome center. The city and the county will have to fund that, or the city, whichever. You'll also notice at the waterfront that there is a little gazebo. What we're thinking is getting this in and having fishing tournaments and having the award ceremonies right there on the front. This could become a major tourist attraction and it will definitely take the hidden jewel of the river and suddenly make it something that has a focus because 
This is a project that will be completed by July of 14, less than a year away. This project will be in place. Is there any hopes that the city might obtain a convenience store there? Uh, no, ma'am. The we we are talking though to the owner of the convenience store about a redesign because when the I guess this is a better picture. The convenience store is on the far left, and there is no question that that convenience store being located immediately adjacent to this facility has the potential to sell gas. Mm -hmm. So we think that they may be interested in talking about redeveloping their property, putting a different station, maybe a station that has a little bit more ambiance with a theme that might blend into the theme that we're doing, pardon me, for the, uh, for the uh, Jacksonville Landing Project. But, uh, now, let me show you one other thing that's exciting. Both sides of the bridge are, have enough elevation that at a future time we can build a boardwalk under the bridge. On the side where Jacksonville Landing is, you know that across Marine Boulevard we have the Fisherman's Wharf property. Now, forget the fact that Fisherman's Wharf as it is have a vision here. If we were to build something positive over on that side that would be in addition to the restaurant that, uh, that Bob <coughs> Beck has, and he's done a great job with that restaurant, and the name of that restaurant is the Arena Cafe. Arena Cafe. But if we can replace Fisherman's Wharf with a hotel or a mixed-use development, and then have a boardwalk that would tie that facility under the roadway system to the Jacksonville Landing Facility. Or in the future, as we work across the river where the current USO property is, and work on redeveloping that waterfront and have something that would go under the bridge to connect to the Angelo Insight. The important thing is that vision in designing this bridge was there so that these opportunities are there. Now, I'm not saying they're gonna happen this week, but at least in designing the bridge, we have this potential. Now, does the city own where Onslow Inn, you just mentioned that, for that, we they bought that, right? Yes, ma'am. So this is in vision, is taking that in division too? Yes, now what we will do with that, whether it's a civic center or something else, you know, who knows what we'll wind up doing. Real, real quickly, uh, downtown, I'm just gonna run through these. Uh, we're looking with the study committee on how we do better improvements downtown Maybe what we do is take Court Street and turn it into a pedestrian mall area with better landscaping. Maybe and this would be a good example. Maybe what we also do is to take the buildings across from the county courthouse and we tear them down and we build a downtown square so that what you have is a great square downtown rather than, than buildings. Uh, what we may also do, here's Court Street today, here's Court Street tomorrow. What was the change? Well, a couple of things. If you notice power lines, well, interestingly enough, none of those power lines serve a single building. <laughs> They're all the transmission line through downtown. Every one of those buildings gets their electricity off the back sides. The problem is to underground the utilities from 17 all the way down to the train depot is almost a million dollars. And the bad news is Progress Energy, which is now Duke Progress, they don't have any program for assisting you in funding that. If we're ever gonna do those things, we're gonna to have to reach into our own cash drawer, but just look at the difference between this and this. Mm -hmm. Just taking the power lines down, what a phenomenal difference. Now moving real quickly, here's another thing that the committee talked about, pedestrian safety. If we could widen the sidewalks downtown, eliminate the parallel parking, or install at least bulb outs, so that you would have parallel parking, you could definitely change the feel, the safety, the visibility, the beauty of the downtown area from this to something like this. We know that the uh, justice complex, while certainly it was controversial, the design standards that they have built this to greatly added to the downtown. Look again on the left-hand side. We have a program on the right-hand side of nice wide sidewalks with great landscaping. 
The problem on the left-hand side is the sidewalk is only four feet wide. It has, it has power poles in it. It has no curb. This is a street that is much too wide today. We can skinny this street down to 24 feet that would allow two-way traffic. You could pick up great outside dining space in front of those buildings. But it doesn't work unless you move the power poles. And again, just that one block we know is almost $300,000. But you could do that and not have any cost to not one of those businesses because they all get their power from the back side of their buildings. Real quickly, here are just some additional concepts. Wider streets, uh, wider sidewalks, not as wide streets. And again, possible paving markings, and again, in the downtown square. area, pardon me? This is the court square. Uh, and what we're talking there is possibly building, taking the older buildings down. I recognize that a couple of them are on the National Register. Let's don't get hung up with that. I'm, not, I'm looking at vision, not specifics here. But if you took this and you built this, what that would encourage from a downtown development standpoint is all of those buildings all the way around it. The parking lot on the left side to be converted into new buildings that would look on the park, that would have a two, three-story complex where people would, would want to have shops downtown, want to have businesses, offices, coffee shops around that square. And one of the greatest opportunities that we have in the study that the county and city are doing is the confirmation of what the previous study said. This is our waterfront today. Barbara Eichner made, a, I think, a very bold and valuable statement when she made the statement, cars don't care whether they park by water or not. They don't care where they park. So if we can turn this into that, it's doable. We own all that land, we meaning the governments. The county owns a lot of it, the city owns a little bit of it, but the only difference between that and this is the willingness to fund it and the commitment to actually do it. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, a lot of stuff that's going on downtown. I apologize for taking up your whole meeting but what I hope you see is the fact that this mayor and council, with your advice, has taken seriously about moving this city forward with greening and cleaning and a future. So with that, that's, uh, that's the end of my five-minute speech. I apologize <laughs> for lasting that long. I'd like to say thank, thank you for coming here. Much. I've been on the, commission, the old commission for 22 years, and now this for about a year. And it's the best meeting I've ever been to, mm -hmm. to see that it's finally going to happen. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you and the city council for voting and being behind this. It can be done. It can be done. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I don't have my glasses. You're going to have to tell me what you're going to do. Oh, the murals. Okay. And, and real, uh, real quickly. I think one of the greatest things that has come out of the mural discussion is the fact that we finally found two advisory groups who wanted to talk to each other. Now, whether the council will approve the murals or not, a major step was taken by the planning board and the environmental appearance committee talking about the same concept. That's what citizen advisory is all about. Uh, the current things we're thinking about is allowed only in the downtown. They must have a theme. They must contribute to the body of work. And what we're talking about there is we have a branding program coming up using the theme that comes out of the branding program possibly to set that up. You can read these very quickly. Uh, council discussed this this past week, actually Tuesday night. Uh, a lot of good comments from council, a lot of good concern. They've asked us to go further down the way to try to develop more specificity and see if we can continue to move the project forward. They're not ready, they meaning the mayor and council are not ready to bless it, but they did say we should continue to explore it. So anything else? Okay. Thank you all very much. Exciting, exciting times and we appreciate y'all's involvement.
may stay and hang out with us, or you may go home. I'm going to go home. <laughs> I'm going to go home. <laughs> Thank you again for what you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, several meetings ago, we had a police chief, uh, Yanero, come and meet with us, and he, you know, the correlation between graffiti, broken windows, and uh, abandonment deals with the higher crime rates. So, and he did a nice presentation and all that. And then he, they've invited us to help try to reduce that. So for us to go back and do another tour of areas where they see that maybe we can give our opinion and feedback. Tonight you've been given a sheet of paper here with some different options. If you could just put your name on there and check all or none that apply to you and give us your ballot, that would be great. So if we take a quick second to do that. And the winner is. <laughs> and it usually lasts about an hour. Is that the game plan that we're going for? Mm, we were a little oh, longer, hour, about, hour, about an hour, hour and a half. So I, like that. Yeah, I don't think it was much more than an hour no. and a half. Oh, this is one. Well, we should have done this before. I know, it's a lot easier than <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Gwen or Carmel and one of them will figure out and then just shoot us an email and let us know? Absolutely. Okay. The next item on our agenda is the work plan. We, act, we have been working on it. We're still in the process of doing that. And we're trying to get the chairs of the different subcommittees for us all to get together and kind of have, hash that out. So um, we'll have a further We'd like to have the committee the chairs and let's conversate bring that back to you folks and then let's go from there would you like to touch on the committee organization part? well yes I'll help you with that okay. the um, obviously over time um, um, obviously this last month we have met more intensely with the committees and so we wanted to check to make sure that um, we had everybody put in the right place and so um, there's obviously some vacancies and um, you know our new members um, hopefully can can look at that as page 19 and um, one of the things that we wanted to mention is that um, the, um, we had an error in there. Ms. Webb has um, resigned from the Appearance and Partnerships Planning Subcommittee. She just simply couldn't make that meeting as it was and felt um, that way. And um, so we do have a vacancy on education and outreach and we have a vacancy on appearance and partnerships. And um, Mr. Carroll um, is willing to entertain a another member on the recognition subcommittee and um, the tree board um, um, we've understand that mrs saunders is going to indicate that she's going to decline from that she wants to remove herself from some of these committees as such there but i think we were good we were saying on that one we're absolutely because it only has okay. to be three to five right. members okay um, that one's the one of the the one subcommittee that's in the city ordinance that has some rules attached to it there's no need to blurt it out now, but if you have a, a preference for something, you've talked to the chairman um, as she appoints the members um, to these um, subcommittees. Um, fair game for the chairman of each of these subcommittees are the new members, and um, you know, let the battle begin on that, so mm -hmm. to speak. But um, um, let us, um, if you would, converse with the chairman. Thank you. Um, now we're to the subcommittee reports. The tree board, we met August 22nd and we were working on our first draft of the tree ordinance and thank you betty for getting that started um we've also were working on arbor day and dealing with the changes in the memorial program so um i think that's really about it for all we've done we're going to meet again shortly and we'll have updates with that later uh pat would you like to Talk to us about recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Need to okay, we held a meeting just before the other meeting tonight, and we had three nominations for uh, outstanding appearance of uh, residents. And the one that we're pushing, or I guess we're told full body votes on it, is 10100 Highland Court, which is on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. that one was, it was uh, nominated by Mr. and Mrs. Wheeler. 
Many of you will know this residence more from its side that faces DeWitt Street than you will um, Highland Court. To the intersection of DeWitt and Highland. Mm -hmm. Who are you seeing? This, this is Paul. Paul. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> this is your nominating, nominating form. You can either uh, pick up at City Hall or go on the website at City Hall. But they are encouraged for people to nominate businesses and residents in the city in this quarterly award. If you have trouble, just call City Hall here and we'll get you hooked up on it. We you. welcome nominations. <laughs> um, Linda's not here to give the update for appearance and partnerships. So. Well, we might um, um, just summarize about that they met August 27th and um, Sanitation Superintendent Kerry Terrell was there and Human L Herman Lanier, the uh, Assistant Superintendent. Uh, they, the citywide cleanup effort um, for September 16th to 20 is still on. You're going to start seeing some publicity um, early next week on this part of the process. Um, because of the way in which sanitation operates and such, this is not a bring everything to the curb type of cleanup. This is going to be a cleanup to target um, furniture, um, a special emphasis of that, and to make other people aware of some of the other items that can be picked up on demand. And so that's what this gets it started. This will be the first one. They did talk about a spring cleanup that would be more neighborhood specific and hopefully inspired by some of the trips that the committee takes and looks around and, and particularly with what might come out of the environmental um, crime prevention tour. They have set their next meeting for 10 a.m. September 25th. Thank you. And Betty, if you could update us on the education and outreach planning, that'd be great. And we had a really great subcommittee meeting um, regarding the adopter programs. We have gotten some interest in that lately. And um, if you all know of any organizations that would be interested in being a part of the adopter program, let us or Camilla know, and um, we'll get the information out to them as soon as possible. We're also talking about the possibility of doing a public school type um, recycling contest. Um, that's still in the works with the Onslow County Schools. So um, more information on that is that's forthcoming. Um, the last thing I'd like to um, bring out was that we have a recommendation for the recognition committee. Um, there are many businesses and the hotels, small businesses, large businesses here in town that do recycle on a regular basis. And one thing that we thought would be nice is that there would be a recycling recognition for the businesses that recycle. So we just like to suggest that for y'all's consideration. Okay. And that's all I have right now. All right, thank you. Any staff we have items? nothing else. <laughs> okay, um, at this time, are there any board member comments? It was very nice hearing what Dr. Woodruff had to say today. It was, I, I mean, agree. Jacksonville is going to really benefit. In 2014, by the summer, we're going to yep. be looking good. It's very nice. <laughs> very, very You have good. Mrs. Washington and the council to thank for yes, this. They and funded I these said programs. I, ago, I appreciate the backing of city council because we need to look for them. I'm just meeting. wondering if why we have the adopted trail and adopted street if we don't need an adopt a median. Well, kind of touched on that. I mean with all these yes. things coming up and they're going to be so beautiful I mean there's always trash everywhere and it kind of be cool to have a little mm -hmm. you know. They're difficult to get to. They, they are dangerous. and it might be a high school thing if I see if we were if we had talked about that before because right. I mean I wouldn't want to take my middle school kids right in the middle of the street but. Glenn you wanted to adopt the median there across from that church didn't you? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Our next meeting will be Thursday, October the 3rd at 6 p.m. And at this time, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Y'all have a great evening. Very good meeting.